This is just about all the visuals there are in this game, by the way. This is more, this is a story game, like, through and through. It's a choose-your-own-adventure story, and we just get to, like, read it together and have fun. Dark Room, the Dark Room has more visuals, but, like, honestly, I could tell this was pretty good from the second I turned it on. Shall we, chat? Reading? It's not much reading. Let us begin. Oh, hang on. Wait, wait, one more. One more. Mr. Felicio, 12, thank you for the $5. Lord Tomato, the coal miners are rebelling. I don't know how, but they managed to sneak a bunch of explosives in. They have a leader called Bombo or something. I don't know. They demand higher wages. Should I send in the... Just seal the whole fucking coal mine. We'll make a new one. There's coal everywhere. Just seal them in. Seal them in. Let them use their bombs to get themselves out. All right, thank you. Make a new mine over the bodies of the starved when they die in that mine. Understand? It's official. Tomato is a 1920 strike breaker. <laughs> hey, you know what? Hey, if that's what it takes, man. If that's what it takes. All right, start. Kyle wakes up. He is famous. Okay, this is... Kyle is the host of the most popular talk show in recent memory, Stay Up Late with Kyle. Okay. 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 Stay Up Late with Kyle has grown in popularity quickly in the last year, and the public has noticed. Oh my god. <laughs> the public... Chat, maybe I was wrong about Kyle. He might not suck. He might be, like, super famous, and we could uh, get make some money off of this guy. Hey, uh, Inside has called Kyle... A most excellent dumpy white man. Uh, uh, what? Oh. Uh, Top Tech noted Kyle is inspiring youth to, pr to explore STEM fields, okay? Most other talk shows are dedicated to discussing Kyle and his personal details. I see, I see. Okay. Lots of eyes are on Kyle. Most online videos are best of clips taken from Kyle's latest broadcast. I, I see. The eye of the world is upon Kyle. Tonight is Kyle's most important guest interview ever. Stay Up Late with Kyle will be featuring Rachel May. She's a kind and lovely philanthropist. Oh my god. Rachel May. She is dear to the hearts of many. This interview requires preparation. Kyle cracked his eyes open, knowing today is his last chance to prepare for the interview. Kyle has 30 hours left. He must choose his actions wisely. Start preparing. Kyle's first decision of the morning was made wisely. I... 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 I, I, um, I choose wither away? Kyle decided to stay put and wither away. Kyle withered successfully and died. Oh. Oh. Shucks. Kyle is now a ghost. This does not relieve him of his responsibilities. I'm dead. Yeah. I, they aren't letting me stop, though. They're making me continue. Hang on, I'm gonna turn on my nice, like, fucking jazz music. 24 hours of jazz. I want some background track for this. This'll do. Yeah. There we go. Just a little something in the background. Well, I... I'm cool, I'm cool. You know who's not cool? Kyle. He's currently dead. Alright, well, I'm gonna get out of bed anyways, then. Kyle exited his bed and took a quick glance around his bedroom. Um, I truly... I, I don't want to leave yet, chat. That'd be a bad idea. I think if we leave... I think if we leave, there's gonna be a problem. I need to. I need supplies. What if it's a, what if it's a post-apocalypse out there? I'm gonna scavenge for supplies. Kyle quickly crouched down on the floor, realizing his immediate need for... I don't like either of these two. But gossip isn't gonna help me on the big day. I need sustenance. I choose bugs. Kyle started to pick between the fuzz of his bedroom carpet, hoping to catch a stray beetle or two. Okay? Soon he had a small handful of various insects dead and alive. We will save it for later, alright? 
We will save for later use. We have no idea. All right, we have no idea where this may apply later. We're gonna put this in our inventory for later. We're gonna save the bugs. Kyle stashed the wriggling mass for later use. Go back to the bedroom. Okay. Kyle returned to the center of the bedroom. Let's uh, let's put our. Do we have? Let's put some clothes on. We have. I don't think we have clothes on. We may not have. Uh, Kyle opened the closet. It was dark. And he could only really see his hanging shirts. Choose an outfit. Kyle decided to take some time to, to choose the perfect outfit, knowing how important appearance is. No. Surely not. Surely not. Suit of armor is both respectable and powerful, and people are going to respect it. Okay? All right? Suit of armor is going to say, hey, I'm ready. I'm I'm ready to go. I'm a ghost, but I'm still vulnerable. Even now, it's gonna it's gonna command respect. Okay, chat. I think we gotta go with a suit of armor for this one. I'm ready. It's gonna demand respect from people that even as a ghost, I still believe that I'm vulnerable to things. I'm not invincible. It's a power move. I'm getting the suit. Kyle was unsure of what exactly caused him to decide to wear his armor, but it felt like the right thing to do. All right, so we're wearing armor. We have bugs in our pants. We are dead. So it's currently we got a pretty good thing going for us. Uh, we have 19 hours for the end of days. It's been 10, I think. After much squeezing and sweating, Kyle managed to wrap the metal suit around his dumpy self. Okay. Um, almost sort of sad. They keep calling Kyle dumpy. I don't understand why they keep calling him dumpy. Back to the room. Kyle returned to the center of the bedroom. Let's just get out. Hang on. No, we got to check the desk. Kyle made his way over to his desk and sat down. Write notes for the interview. We need. We don't even know what we're going to say to Rachel May yet. Kyle wrote down his first question. I think Kyle's dying. I think this is some sort of purgatory experience he's having. You know what? Fuck Rachel. Let's ask her. Let's fucking... She's on my show. Let's see how much she knows about me. Am I a mother? Kyle wrote down his second question. Ever eaten a rag hole? <laughs> Do you believe in the power of a curse? Ever gone mountain biking before? Ah, uh, what are some ever eaten a raw egg hole? Khan wrote down his third question. Do you ever smile? After I, I purposely ran over a puppy before. Did you know that? <laughs> I'm going crazy, dude. I'm gonna lose my mind right on camera. Chat, whatever gives me, whatever gives me those fucking views, understand? I purposely ran over a puppy. I'm just gonna drop it and we're gonna get our fucking clicks, understand? It was a ghost puppy. You have to get, I'm gonna ask her if she ever smiles. Kyle wrote down his last question. Are you guilty? Kyle ripped his page of notes out of the notebook and got up from the desk, back to the guest. All right, we're good. I'm gonna pull out my fucking, I'm gonna pull out my weapon of choice from the desk drawer. Now, Kyle opened up the side drawer on the desk and grabbed one of the items stored there. The key. The key, chat. The key. Of course, it was all the whole time. The key. We need this. We have to, it will be, it, this is a quest. Naturally, we're wearing the knight's armor. I grab the key. I return to the desk. I have seven hours. I have to go home. I have to leave to the hallway. I haven't eaten food yet. I got six hours. It takes me a whole hour to walk to the hall. Kyle walked into the small hallway that connects the rooms of his apartment together. Ugh. Check locked door. Kyle walked over to the strange door in the hallway, but found quickly that the door was locked from the inside. Float through as a ghost. Kyle used his ghostly power to walk straight through the door. Kyle found himself in the room he stashed the various items he sent to him by fans. I'm out of time. I'm going to die. I have to get out of the house. I don't have time to do this. I have like the fucking fan room where I store all of, like the shit people send me like in my P.O. box right now. I got to go. I have to get outside, leave apartment. Kyle walked into the middle of the road and took a long pondering look around him. I visit the tech store. I think I'm dead. 
Kyle hurry to the set of course I, I honestly I, I didn't even have to go all right so obviously we're gonna be doing multiple playthroughs of this because there's a billion things to do in this game um, but this time I'm hurrying to the set because uh, it, it just immediately activates ceased to be a ghost per normal he ceased to be a ghost before he arrived of course naturally sitting across from his host chair was a glamorous woman with an air of genuinity as Kyle approached her, Rachel looked up and smiled. Approach Rachel. Good evening, Kyle, she said, looking him in the eyes. I've been looking forward to being here. Kyle responded, Um, I can't blow this one yet, dude. I gotta fucking keep her on the road for like another 10 minutes until I can like get her to like admit to the fucking... Yeah, I, I, I know, dude. I gotta fucking keep her on the road for a minute. Uh, I answered politely. Hey. And I as well, Rachel answers Kyle, extending his hand and greeting. You are a most welcome guest. We shake hands. After another mild exchange of pleasantries, Rachel and Kyle were prompted to take their places for the broadcast. A moment after seating, the studio lights brightened and the cameras clicked on. Is this going to have audio the whole time? No. <laughs> I was going to turn off the music, but apparently that was the whole track. Good evening, everyone, said Kyle, looking at the camera. Welcome back to Stay Up Late with Kyle. Tonight, I have the pleasure of interviewing the lovely Rachel May, who needs no more introduction. Rachel, Kyle motioned to Rachel, who smiled and waved at the camera. Hello, Kyle, she said. I'm glad to be here. Dude, she's not going to be very glad when she sees my three questions. She's not going to be very glad when she hears about my three freaky questions I asked. What did I even write down? I still have bugs in my pocket, dude. They're probably getting all over my chair right now. And I'm wearing my armor. And I have the key. I got I, I, I got her. If I'd spun around and screamed, she would have left. But now I got her right where I want her. I'm going to get that confession. I'm going to get her for the murder. Chat, it's for real going to happen. I've been a fucking detective the whole time. In response, Kyle collapsed on the floor. Oh, okay. Oh, uh-oh. What? Well, I die. I die. I died. I died. I died. From a combination of stressful preparation and not eating anything, Kyle has passed out. I didn't eat food today, of course, naturally. I was a ghost, though, so I, I mean, I had the bugs in my pocket. I just didn't... Um... Nobody in the studio quite knew what to do with him. They began to poke Kyle in the back to see if he moved. Uh, after a while, they ended the broadcast, shut off the lights, and went home. Kyle was left face first on the floor. Kyle prepared by starving himself to death. Okay, I lost. We never got to find out what Rachel's deal was. Chat, I died. I have to go back. I have to go back. I'm going back. We're going back in, chat. I can't let this happen. Kyle's first decision of the morning was made wisely. Exit the bed. Kyle exited the bed and took a quick glance around his room. I'm going to write the questions. I need the questions. I need questions. Kyle made his way over the desk and sat down. Write notes for the interview. I'm asking the same ones as last time. Am I a mother? Have you ever eaten a raw egg whole? Do you ever smile? Are you guilty? All right, I got it. Back to room. Let's get out of here. Kyle, I don't need armor, all right? I'm a man. I'm a man. I sleep in my business suit. Kyle walked into the small hallway that connects the rooms of the apartment together. Move to the kitchen. Kyle walked to the center of the kitchen. Okay. Open the fridge. Kyle opened the fridge, intending to find something to eat. Oh no. No, surely this can't be happening to me. I eat the whole thing. Kyle pointed his neck directly upward and hoisted the fridge on top of his face. I see, I see. Somehow, miraculously, he wrapped his mouth around the device and started to swallow it. I hung like a snake man. In one slow, horrible movement, the fridge slid down Kyle's throat. After many gurgles, pops, and snaps, Kyle felt relatively sure the fridge would not come back out. Kyle walked to the center of the kitchen. I don't know if that means I ate 
or I didn't eat. I think I ate everything, including whatever was in the fridge, so I should be fully fed now. I'm gonna check the pantry. Kyle walked to access the pantry, but found it was locked with a small keyhole. The small key! No! Shit! I gotta get out of here. No! I need, I need true sustenance. I don't have time. There's no way I have time. I have 10 hours. I'm gonna leave the apartment. Kyle walked out into the middle of the road and took a long, pondering look around him. Visit the downstairs neighbor. Kyle approached his downstairs neighbor's door and knocked. Okay. A middle-aged woman named Gabby answered the door. She looked at Kyle expectantly, greet and start a lovely conversation. Good morning, neighbor, said Kyle cheerfully. Gabby looked at Kyle expectantly. Um, ask Gabby about Gabby. How, how, is, how is the Gabby today? Gabby asked Kyle, tell me about yourself. Gabby stiffened. Oh, you know, she said, putting on a fake smile. I just sit around here. Yes, I don't get around much. Never go out at night. I, I just sit here, right here. She, Gabby glared at Kyle. Why is she glaring at me? Convinced by Gabby's statement, Kyle bid her goodbye and returned to the street. Well, that was five hours of my life I spent talking to Gabby. Uh, and now I'm out of time. I'm fucking doomed. Gabby was a trick, uh, a fucking, a, a ruse meant to destroy my life. Uh, it's over. I've lost everything. Again. Well, I'm not, uh, I'll run to the tech store as fast as I can. Kyle walked into the clean white tech store. He was greeted by Techno Jim. Uh, an elaborate cutout mascot with flashing like, grab him. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. I almost got him. Couldn't get him. They yanked me to the fucking set. They warped me there. I couldn't get a hold of I couldn't get a hold of Jim. Alright. Kyle hurried to the set. Alright, blah 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 Rachel smiles quickly. Uh we meet up with Rachel. Her smile quickly turned to shock as she realized Kyle had not put on clothes that day. Is there a fucking problem here, Rachel? It's a power move. I am strong. I'm strong and independent, and I will be naked for this entire interview. And they have to roll it. There is no canceling the interview. I will be naked. Confidence. Power. Why are the rest of you wearing clothes today, huh? I, I'm sorry that it takes me an hour to do anything at all, including think about what I'm going to do today. I'm sorry it takes me five hours to figure out how to turn, put on my suit of armor. I don't, I don't have time. Un understand? Kyle waved and smiled broadly. Rachel uncomfortably averted her eyes. Look at it. Look at me. Kyle started making his rounds around the room, greeting each crew member. None of whom looked at him directly. Stop looking away! <laughs> you cowards! As it became apparent that Kyle had no intention of leaving, Rachel made some excuses and exited the set. You coward! One by one, the crew followed suit on being a- I'll do it- I'll do it myself! I'll do the whole show myself. It's fine. I'll do it myself. Kyle was left all alone. That sucks, and also is wrong. That's so fucked up. No, dude, no. Wow. Imagine being so weak. I get out of bed. I walk over to my fucking closet. Oh, man, it was dark. I could only really see his hanging shirts. Choose an outfit. Kyle decided to take some time to choose the perfect outfit, knowing how important appearance is. Business casual. But I gotta go to a fucking swimming meet later. I'm an Olympic swimmer with fucking, you know, a job to do on the side, you know? Is what I'm sort of looking like right now. That's what I'm thinking of. I, I, I'm, a, I'm a busy man, but I also love, I also love the water. And I, I'm like Aquaman, but he has to go get a job today. Or I could choose pure depravity. I put it on. Kyle chose the pasties made out of mashed skunk flesh. Yes, of course. No, Rachel, you you canceled the appointment for the interview yesterday because I was wearing nothing. Does this does this suit you better, Rachel? Rachel, 
Does, is this a better choice for you? Do you prefer this? 12,000 skunks mashed into a liquid that was then synthesized into the clothing you see. Now then. Greeting the slimy garment, getting the slimy garments to stay proved difficult, so Kyle opted to stick them to his body with hot glue. Ah, yes, naturally. Of course, it has to stay. What if, what if, what if, what if I had a nip, what if I had a nip slip on, on fucking stream? On live, understand? It'd be horrible. I'd be banned. So naturally, that makes sense to me. I have to write the question. I need this. Chat, I need this. We write the notes, we eat some food. Write notes. Am I a mother? Ever eaten a rye call? Do you ever smile? Are you guilty? Let's get out of here. All right. I forgot to fucking grab the key. I need the small key to open up the pantry. I'm going back for it. I check in the desk drawer. I grab the small key. I got it. I have time. I have time. I have time. I get outside. I run to the kitchen. I get to the pantry. Kyle wanted to access the pantry, but found it was locked with a small keyhole. Unlock with small key. The pantry door lock creaked as if it hadn't moved for years, but eventually it opened. Look in the pantry. Instead of an assortment of canned goods and grains, Kyle's pantry stored his massive amount of bottled lard. I... I eat the lard. I have to. It's own. It's a chat. I know one thing. Lard has calories. That's a lot of fat. That'll keep me alive. Eating one bottle of this will technically keep me alive for about a month uh, on its own. It's disgusting. It's horrible, but it is going to keep. It's gonna cut out the middleman for a while. Then I'll die. But that's irrelevant. All I need to do is get the fucking interview done. Kyle voraciously grabbed the closet bottle, the closest bottle, snapped the neck against the wall, and sucked out all of the fat within a minute. I need more! <laughs> more! More! Ch Kyle wildly sucked down another bottle. He felt very sick. More! Kyle's vomit and lard were mixing in a way to make it hard to tell which was which. Finish the job! As Kyle finished the last bottle of lard, he felt a wave of accomplishment come over him. Return to the kitchen. Let's get the hell out of here. I'm gonna open the fridge and eat some ketchup before I go. All right? Right? Rachel! Ray, I'm ready for our interview, Rachel! Rachel! I'm ready for our interview. Kyle hurried to the shed. Lovely. Sitting across from his host chair was a glamorous woman with an air of genuinity. As Kyle approached her, Rachel looked up and smiled. Anything you want to say about my outfit? Good evening, Kyle, she said, looking at him in the eyes. I've been looking forward to being here. Of course, of course, naturally, who wouldn't be? Kyle responded, I can't do, I've got, I've come so far. I can't do this to me. I absolutely cannot do this to me. No, be strong. I have to find out if she did it or not. Chat the questions. I, ha I, I have to ask the questions. Answer politely. And I as well, Rachel, answered Kyle, extending his hand and greeting. You are most welcome guest. You shake hands. After another mild exchange of pleasantries, Kyle and Rachel were prompted to take their places for the broadcast. Don't die! Oh my god, it's happening. A moment after seating, the studio lights brightened and the cameras clicked on. Start the broadcast! Good evening, everyone, said Kyle, looking to the camera. Welcome back to Stay Up Late with Kyle. Introduce Rachel. Kyle vomited all the horrible things he'd eaten earlier onto the floor. Oh. oh. <laughs> uh, I can't do it, dude. 
<laughs> my lord! <laughs> my lord, dude! My lord! <laughs> Rachel looked at Kyle concerned, gave a couple of coughs and decided to play it cool and keep the show running. Thank you, Rachel. Kyle stopped. <laughs> Then vomited again, then continued with a shaky voice. Uh, Ra Rachel, <laughs> Rachel, uh, uh, tonight I have the pleasure of interviewing the lovely Rachel May, who needs no more introduction. <laughs> Kyle motioned to Rachel, who smiled and waved at the camera. <laughs> Hello, Kyle. She said, I'm glad to be here. I, I, I know. Well, uh, I'm sure we'll have a lot to, to discuss. So we might as well dive right in, said Kyle. I'm very ready, said Rachel with a winning smile. It's time to dismantle her whole career question. Chat, these questions I've made today, chat, will destroy everything she's ever built up. All right, that's the whole point. I'm gonna ruin her career. We're gonna ask the question she's never been brave enough to answer. And then I'll die. And then I'll finally pass away. Kyle produced the notes he had taken earlier. <clears throat> where to begin? <laughs> where to begin on, uh, on this one today? Uh, where to begin? <clears throat> so... Big questions tonight, uh, Rachel. Have you have you ever eaten a raw egg hole? The whole thing? You ever eaten a raw egg hole? Asks Kyle. Um, like shell and all? Asks Rachel. Kyle continued. I have, like, a lot. It's really bad, though, so sometimes I, I spit it back up. <laughs> Kyle, please. This is about her. Make her answer it. Don't fucking go like don't you're, you're you're making these questions to tell people about you, please, Kyle. Uh. There was a silence. Answer the question, you coward. But actually, it gets easier the more you do it. Continued Kyle without losing momentum. So don't start. I say, don't start. Don't start eating them. Don't just don't eat the eggs raw. Guys, why is Kyle doing this to me? I, I, I've wanted to have a good interview and so far Kyle is ruining everything we built on this fucking bullshit. Rachel chose to not answer and look in the other direction. You coward! What are you here for then? Huh? Answer the fucking questions! You, oh! Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize. I didn't. I didn't realize this was like a fucking thing where you could just show up and sit in my chairs, huh? I'm mad. Fine. I have other questions. Mm, am I a mother? T Pop quiz. You like the show so much, you asked to be interviewed on this show. How about you answer some fucking questions for once, huh? How about you answer one? How about you fucking think about this one for a minute? Rachel, am I a mother? Kyle looked at her very seriously. Rachel was visibly very unsure of how to respond. Answer this wrongly and you are in... You are in big trouble. Publicity-wise, so, um, you know, be very careful. I've just basically laid a, like, fucking foolproof trap to destroy your career on this one, chat. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, this is a career ender if you answer this one wrong. <coughs> Sorry, I tried to mute my cough there. <laughs> but the mute button didn't work. So you guys just got to hear me hack. I'm sorry. Uh, that wasn't a sneeze. That was a me coughing. That was just the large jet. Well, Kyle, I think you might be a better source of answering that question than I am. What the fuck? Is, what does that fucking mean, Rachel? What do you mean? Elaborate. What does that mean? Are you are you, are you telling me to answer? Are you def you're dodging? You're do you're you're deflecting my question. You're asking me to answer it. You're avoiding the questions. But do you think I'm a mother? Ask Kyle, pushing further. Good Kyle, going for the kill. 
Rachel, pause for a second before answering. Go on. I think you inspire the youth to pursue STEM fields, she answered. I see, I see, I see, I see. Uh, y this isn't even an answer. You've evaded my, you've dodged my trap. Uh, that's just, that's meaningless garble you just made up, Rachel. Um, I'm, I, you're, I, I, this is all chat, don't worry. These are all predicted answers I thought about because that's why the last question today is going to destroy her entire career. <laughs> Oh yeah, we're getting there, chat. We're gonna out her for being a reptilian in about two more questions. And then it's all over. It's over, it'll be over. I promise. Rachel, do you ever smile? Like seriously, Kyle spat out the question out viciously. He spat it out viciously. Do you ever smile? Rachel stopped smiling. Uh-oh. -uh. Uh, uh, uh oh, oh! She stopped. That made her stop smiling. So you're telling me? Yeah, I, I mean, I don't have a visual on her. Uh, um, if you're going to be on the show, Rachel, you need to smile, okay? Said Kyle, not smiling. <laughs> you, you gotta take it seriously. You're on my show right now, Rachel. And you're sort of making a fool of both of us right now. I put a lot. I, I'm going out in Olivia for you, Rachel. You're, Rachel. Let me level with you here. You're here to get views, and you'll get more views if you smile. All right. Here, I, 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 I'll show you how. Kyle turned to the camera and gave the audience a huge teeth clench to bug-eyed grimace. Rachel nodded and obviously wanted to move on. <sighs> it's time. She's obviously a cyborg. We just confirmed it, chat. Everything I've been building up to today has come to this moment. It's time. It's time to end this once and for all. <clears throat> Rachel! Are you guilty? Kyle threw his questions on the floor, stood up, and pointed at her. Rachel's eye twitched slightly. Guilty of what, dear Kyle? She smiled disingenuously. Guilty! Sprat Kyle, of your crimes! Rachel did not answer. Her eyelids both started twitching uncontrollably. After reading his final question, Kyle looked up from his paper. Well, Rachel, I think that's all I was planning on asking you today. If that's the case, Kyle, may I ask you something in return? Rachel said, smiling one more time. She didn't even answer the fucking question. What on earth are you wearing? Are they made of skunks? Oh, you finally noticed. You, f you finally noticed. Oh, that's so kind of you to finally notice what I've been wearing this whole time. Yes, I'm wearing skunk pasties made out of skunk. Uh, crafted specifically from the from the bodies of 10,000 skunks mashed and liquefied in the hydraulic press uh, synthesized into thread the outfit of the one percent Rachel that's right before Kyle could answer the camera shut down the broadcast was over Kyle returned home knowing the interview had gone well but as he lay in bed and drifted to sleep he felt that Perhaps something was still missing. Kyle prepared very well. Very well. Chat, that was a flawless interview. I literally couldn't have done it better. I could I literally couldn't have done it better. But I'm gonna do it even better. But hang on. But hang on, because I'm, I'm about to do it one better. <laughs> about to do it. First of all, we're going to have to die. All right? I, I, I'm, I'm going to need to turn into a ghost. So I'm going to die. I'm, I'm choosing to die and wither away into a ghost. Shucks. Now I'm a ghost. I, I, I still have to get up. I'm going to I'm, I, I'm gonna swing over to the closet. I'm going to grab my armor. Just like last time, I put on my suit of... No, I'm going to put on my... I, I'm an athletic... I died drowning. 
Uh, I'm, I died drowning on my way to work today, uh, underneath the water. I tried swimming to work uh, through the um, through the sewer. I couldn't get there all the way, but I am going to be wearing still my jeans and swimming goggles uh, from when I died. So I, Kyle decided to put on a fashion-forward, casual style. He could barely see out of the goggles. I actually, actually. Now I'm going to. I, I, I'm going to go ahead uh, and scavenge some food now. Um, Kyle quickly crouched down on the floor, realizing his immediate need for sustenance. I need to eat or we die. I eat bugs. He started to pick between the fuzz of his bedroom carpet, hoping to catch a stray beetle or two. More. Soon he had a small handful of various insects dead and alive. Eat them now. Kyle threw back his head and crammed the sticky, wriggling mass into his mouth. He felt refreshed. Food check. Exit. The locked door chat. It's time. This we could only get into by being a ghost. I remember it like it was yesterday. Went in here and then like we found out there was where the P.O. box like shit is dropped off. All right. The notes. Don't need them. Today's the day I spin and scream. Understand chat? Today's spin and scream day. Don't need them. We ain't having the interview. Check the locked door. Oh, improvise. Kyle walked over to the strange door in the hallway, but found, it qu found quickly that it was locked from the inside. Saving that for a rainy day. I float through as a ghost. Kyle used his ghostly powers to walk straight through the door. I go inside. Kyle found himself in the room. He stashed with the various items sent to him by the fans. I grab my laser claymore. Expecting a battle, Kyle grabbed the laser claymore. Very good. We'll save the rest of this stuff for a rainy day. Back to the hallway. I gotta sneak. I wish I wasn't all. I hope eventually this stops. My air quality in here is such trash. No armor though, chat. As long as my chat, I think you're not thinking about safety here, okay? I'm wearing safety goggles. Duh. What more armor do I need to protect myself from lasers? Dongus. All right. Well, let's get out of the apartment. I've already eaten. Let's go. Kyle walked out into the middle of the road and took a long pondering look around him. I'm going to go to the tech store. Kyle walked into the clean white tech store. He was greeted by Techno Jim, an elaborate cutout mascot with flashing lights. I'm gonna steal Techno Jim. I need him for my revolution. Quickly, before the attendant could acknowledge him, Kyle grabbed Techno Jim by the shoulders. Finding that Techno Jim's cardboard feet were bolted to the ground, Kyle started to pull upwards forcefully. After several tugs, Techno Jim broke free, leaving one foot and one leg behind. Kyle glanced at the attendant who was staring, bewildered, and ran outside. I return to my apartment. I go through the side door. I grab the supernatural artifact. This is one of the many mysterious artifacts Kyle has been sent over the years. Smash it with the claymore! Kyle began pounding the mysterious artifact with both fists. Within a few hours, it's become dust. I need to get rid of it. It is the curse. It is the thing that holds the curse, which binds us to this world, Jet. It has to be destroyed. All right, well, I'm ready for a business casual swimming trip with my laser claymore in case a fight breaks out and my best friend. Kyle hurried to the set. Per normal, he ceased to be a ghost before he arrived. Sitting across from his host chair was a glamorous woman with an air of genuinity. As Kyle approached her, Rachel looked up and smiled. Approach Rachel. <sighs> Good evening, Kyle, she said, looking at him in the eyes. I've been looking forward to being here. That's cute, Rachel, it really is. But I've decided I'm no longer, I no longer need your services. Uh, you... You've served your purpose of getting clicks, people coming over thinking it's going to be Rachel Day. You know, that's, it's not, it's not going to be you today. It's actually, I'm interviewing Techno Jim today. Uh, so be gone. Kyle roughly shoved Rachel out of her seat and placed Techno Jim in her stead. Very good. As it should have been from the very beginning. Hello, Techno Jim, said Kyle. I'm going to interview you today. 
Kyle grasped Techno's gym's hand and tried to shake it, but instead tore it off the cardboard frame. Kyle's producer, sensing viral media, pulled the bewildered Rachel out of frame and motioned to the crew to go live. Yes! Yes! As it should have been! More! Go deeper! Cameramen moved, lights flashed, and suddenly the studio was on air. Hi, I'm Kyle, said Kyle, and tonight I'm going to interview a very special guest. He pointed to Techno Jim, using the dismembered arm. Techno Jim started to smoke from the heat of the lights. Would you like to introduce yourself, said Kyle, knowing Jim would probably not speak. Kyle took it upon himself to be his voice as well. Hi, Kyle, he said, raising the pitch of his voice. My name is Rachel May, and I'm a very special guest. <laughs> very good. Rachel's expression of confusion turned to shock. Well, Rachel, you look way too thin and absolutely terrible, and you should feel ugly. Kyle gave Jim a meaningful stare. Wow, Kyle, he said. I, I sure wish I could look like you. Techno Jim burst into flames. Spontaneously, the sprinkler system initiated. Curtains of water poured down from the rafters. Within seconds, the production equipment was doused in water. The set was soon a bust with, with electrical fires. Kyle's crew abandoned their post as cameramen and sound mixers to try to put out the fires. As the crew scrambled around, the cameras continued to run. Kyle sat motionless, staring forward. Eventually, the fires were all put out. Kyle's producer shut off the broadcast, leaving Kyle's vacant stare as the final frame. Kyle's ratings skyrocketed. Techno Jim became a staple on the show, often ending up destroyed by the end of each episode. Although Rachel did not come back on the show, her cardboard portrayal did. Rachel was very popular. Kyle interviewed Rachel. Yes! Very good. As it should have been from the beginning. As it should have been, chat. As it should have been. That was probably the best one. That's probably the best ending we will get. But even still, I must go deeper. Even still, we must go deeper into the rabbit hole. What about the artifact? What about the laser claymore? <laughs> I choose to die again. Oh, wait. Hang on. No, I actually don't choose to die. I want to do a new... I want to start again. I'm not going to die. I'm going to smash my head through the wall instead and get, get to my artifact that way. Exit the bed. I'm also going to scavenge today. I'm going to scavenge today. I'm going to go, I'm going to hop down onto the ground today. I've woken up in my bedroom. I get down to scavenge. One thing I haven't done yet. All right. I've realized my immediate need for gossip. <laughs> Kyle firmly pressed his ear to the carpet, hoping to hear some stray words from the neighbors below. Yeah, I heard Rachel May is going on a trip out of the country soon. Oh, girlfriend, tell me more. Well, what I will tell you is that every night I don a mask that looks like a bug and fight misdoers. Uh, what? There was a stunned silence. Then a door opened and someone exited the neighbor's apartment. All right, that's enough. I got some gossip knowledge. I see. The bug man. Bug woman. I understand now perfectly. I get outside. I have to go to the locked door. Kyle walked over to the strange door in the hallway, but found that the door was locked from the inside. Force the door with forehead. Kyle decided he'd best try to force the door open with the use of his face. After smashing his features into solid wood for several minutes, Kyle gained severe short-term amnesia. Oh. Oh. Go to kitchen. Kyle walked to the center of the kitchen. Open fridge. Kyle opened the fridge intending to find something to eat. Eat crust on wall. Kyle started scraping the streaks of crotton spots of black mold off the walls of his fridge. 
After balling up the filth from the sides of the fridge, Kyle bit into the crusty, moist ball. Several minutes of chewing later, Kyle finished chewing and swallowed the ball whole. Kyle walked to the center of the kitchen. Exit. Return to bedroom. Open closet. Choose outfit. Nice suit. Armor. Put on armor. After squeezing in, we returned to the hallway. Four hours left. outside we have time visit the tech store run ask for ask for samples kyle asked the store attendant whether or not they offered any free samples to important customers the attendant gave kyle a confused and slightly vacant look kyle began to beg for a free sample please i need this god damn it no kyle hurried to the set sitting across from the host chair was a glamorous woman with an air of genuinity kyle approached her rachel looked up and smiled approach rachel Good evening, Kyle, she said, looking him in the eyes. I've been looking forward to being here. Kyle responded, forget her name from amnesia. You see, at long last, it comes back to bite me. Who are, where am I? Hello, uh, you? Kyle's ears began to ring from his concussion. Rachel looked at Kyle slightly confused, but continued smiling. Before she noticed the glazed look in Kyle's eyes, the producer approached. Time to get started, he said, putting a hand on Kyle's shoulder. Let's get stationed. <clears throat> Kyle sat in the nearest chair. Rachel, her seat stolen, sat in the host chair. Oh, my brain. The moment, a moment after seating, the studio lights brightened and the cameras clicked on. Start broadcast. Good morning, everyone, Kyle said. My name is... Uh... Uh... uh, uh, um, uh. Kyle made a desperate effort to remember his name, or really anything. Kyle looked at Rachel. Do you know who I am? He asked. Rachel looked back, confused. Who are you? Well, if you're not Kyle, I don't know who you are. Rachel smiled sweetly. Kyle made up his mind that he was probably Kyle. Well, uh, he said, I'm Kyle. A long silence followed. Eventually, Rachel spoke again. Um, and I'm Rachel. Hi, everyone, she waved. Hi, Rachel, said Kyle. So why are you here? Rachel was visibly worried. Ha ha, funny, she said. Were you planning on asking me any questions? I mean, I don't have any ideas, said Kyle. Kyle kept staring at Rachel. Someone coughed. Kyle looked around and noticed the crew. Who on earth are all of you? He asked. Nobody answered. <laughs> Kyle got out of his chair and walked off frame, leaving Rachel alone with millions of viewers. <laughs> Rachel started to attempt to entertain the audience herself. Eventually, the producer ended the broadcast early due to technical difficulties. Kyle woke up in his bed the next day, remembering nothing about what had happened. Kyle forgot everything. Who are you people? Goodbye. I'm leaving. Where's my son? Oh, man. Every single time I try to do scream and spin around ending, I get fucked out of it. I have to die. I need to bring the artifact. Kyle decided to stay put and wither away. All right, I die. I die. I get out of bed. Open the closet. Choose an outfit. Put on my armor. I wear the armor. All right. Exit to the bedroom hallway. Check the locked door. Float through. Go inside. Kyle found himself in the room of stashed various items sent to him by fans. I need them both. 
I need to, I check the supernatural artifact. This is one of the many mysterious artifacts Kyle has been sent over the years. I grab it. Kyle stashes the mysterious artifact for later use. Get the laser claymore. Expecting battle, he grabs the laser claymore. I am a knight. Understand, I'm a ghost knight. Let's get out. I need to eat something. I go to the kitchen. Open the fridge. I open the fridge intending to get something to eat. I eat condiments. Kyle started to grab condiments from the fridge, squirting them into his mouth with both hands. The rate at which ketchup, soy sauce, and other items entered Kyle's mouth soon overrode his ability to swallow. Kyle spewed the excess condiments across the kitchen, covering the furniture and walls. Kyle continued until all the condiments had been emptied. Back to the kitchen. We got five hours. Get outside. I'm never going to have time to get... I, I won't... Chat, I have time to maybe do something in my bedroom really quickly. I definitely don't have time to like... I, no, I have an idea. I'm gonna be, I have an idea. Go to the bedroom. Scavenge for gossip. <laughs> I listen to the neighbors below. I can, get, I can get questions for Rachel from the neighbors below. Understand, chat? I listen to what they say. I heard, Gaysa, I, I, I heard Rachel May is going on a trip soon out of the country. Uh, tell me more. I, I didn't get it. No! No! I'll have to cleave her entwine with a laser sword instead. It's fine. I'll cleave her entwine with the sword. I'll kill her. I'll just kill her. It's fine. Kyle hurried to the set. Per normal, he ceased to be a ghost before he arrived. Sitting across from his host chair was a glamorous woman with an air of genuinity. As Kyle approached her, Rachel looked up and smiled. No. We mustn't. This will surely end the days of as we know it. No, I can't. I throw- I huck the artifact at Rachel. As she approached to shake his hand, Kyle produced a supernatural artifact and winked it at Rachel's face. Within moments of the artifact colliding with her head, Rachel started to turn into a lizard demon. I knew it! I fucking knew it! The, the disguise is gone. The disguise, everything that she used to hide behind is nothing anymore against the artifact. Rachel began to cause destruction, tripping over lights and causing crew members to scatter. Naturally though, Chet, I'm well equipped to deal with a monster. <laughs> Kyle, realizing the disaster he had caused, decided it was up to him to tame the monster. This is for me to do, chat. It is for I to battle. The crew members, the crew members are but innocent bystanders. I am wearing a suit of armor and a laser claymore. I am ready to defeat her. Throw myself at the monster. Kyle launched himself at the monstrous Rachel. In a great collision of flesh, Kyle rammed face first into the monster's stomach. Kyle continued to launch himself into Rachel's stomach with wild abandon. After several dozen collisions, small insignificant bones in Kyle's body began to fracture. Kyle continued. Rachel began to lose consciousness and stamina from the incessant damage Kyle was inflicting upon her. Kyle continued his assault. Nobody present could tell what parts of his body were bruised and what weren't. Eventually, in one well-placed lunge, the artifact embedded in Rachel's face popped out. Immediately, Rachel turned back to her normal human self. The studio, now in shambles, flicked to life. The broadcast had started automatically. Kyle, unable to move properly, became aware that all that the eyes of many were upon him. Kyle tried to address the audience, but instead spewed some mixture of breakfast Flem and chunks of wall. Kyle's spewing video became a very hot meme. Online personalities used it to express distaste about social issues. Teenagers sent it to each other about homework amounts. Rachel's broadcast was rescheduled for the following week. Fans complained about not being able to see Rachel's face as she wore protective headgear the entire time. Rachel prepared by being a lizard. Of course, naturally. How do I use this sword? Dude. How do I, how, how do I use a sword, dude? Cause like, I keep, I keep trying to use this thing and it keeps on not working out. 
I keep wasting time trying to get this sword. And I keep fucking up. Ah, the armor didn't even matter that time. I, I'm getting the sword. I, I fucking do not care. I'm going back. I get out. I go get the sword. First of all, I need food. I scavenge. I grab bugs. I devour them. Eat them now. Back to the bedroom. Yes. I now immediately scavenge for gossip. We need gossip on Rachel. That is our questions for today. All right, those are our questions. We just got our questions, okay? Tomato sucks at this game. Kyle throwing up dot gif. That's right. I said gif like gif. That's right, I just said it like that. Because I want you guys to get even angrier. Uh, gif. <laughs> okay. Exit to bedroom hallway. Locked door, go in. Grab the laser claymore. Draw the sword. Back to the hallway, we're leaving. There's something I have to do. Shit. I go to the tech store. Kyle walked into the clean white tech store. He was greeted by Techno Gym, an elaborate cutout mascot with flashing lights. I'm going to ask the attendant for free samples. No clothes? Oh my god, my clothes. It's fine, I'm gonna spin long before they ask about my clothes. Kyle asked the store attendant whether or not they offered any free samples to important customers. The attendant gave Kyle a confused and slightly vacant look. Kyle began to beg for free samples. Wanting Kyle to leave, the, the attendant grabbed a decrepit phone meant for spare parts and held it out. I pick it up with my mouth. Kyle firmly clamped his mouth around the outstretched phone, creating several teeth holes in the screen. Kyle grunted and yanked with his head until the attendant let go of the phone. The phone is now Kyle's to use forever. Kyle walked into the- I'm gonna have to review this before I go. This phone, said Kyle, is several years old and has exposed wires coming out of the back. And then I leave. <laughs> Damn it! I have to go there earlier. There's never enough time in the day. There's never enough time in the day. All right? I've walked in. I approach Rachel. I'm not wearing clothes. Ah, oh, we got the nudist thing. Damn it! I gotta make- I have to put clothes on- Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. I still have the phone! The phone is forever! Chat! The phone is a forever thing! We have that forever! Kyle's first decision in the morning was made wisely. I make the worst decision anyone can make in their entire fucking life when it comes to being like, to waking up in the morning. I browse my social media. Kyle started to scroll through the news and articles on his phone. Read article. Stay up late with Kyle ranked number one and number two show on television. Wait, number one, I'm the top two shows on television right now, chat. The top two. Read more. New East Bridge being constructed after being found to not actually exist. Authorities investigating. Oh my god. Read more. Another grand larceny in crime spree streak. Evidence points to perpetrator fleeing the country. More. Rachel May to unexpectedly leave the country on very, very long vacation after review tonight. Interview tonight. Read more. Who is the bug vigilante recently spotted pursuing larcenists? More! Kyle fails to show up to several charity events. Uh, different Kyle. There's more than one Kyle in the world, all right? More! Bug Vigilante shows up to charity events with fresh-baked pastries. Donations flourish. More! Hot dogs making resurgence as fuel source for both humans and tugboats. More! Phone model recalled. Techno gym stores blame overuse by customers. More! Kyle's phone exploded in his hands from overuse. Okay. I'm going to go out. Hang on. Hang on. I'm fucking... Now I'm mad. I go outside. I go to the fucking tech store. I'm giving a fucking review of this right now. It blew up in my hands. This phone, said Kyle, is several years old and has exposed wires coming out of the back. Kyle can... The phone also has a serious screen issue after I used it to hammer nails into the wall for a painting. 
Furthermore, when I submerge it in water, I get severely shocked until it runs out of batteries. The attendant looked at Kyle, pursing his lips, and said nothing. Feeling he had made his argument, Kyle decided to leave. I have to go put my clothes on now, dude, so I can ruin my interview. Uh, open closet. Let's just put on, like, I don't know, a, a nice suit. Kyle miraculously crammed his dumpy body into the suit. The chest pockets were filled with random knickknacks. Okay. I, go, I, I scavenge for resources before... Kyle began to comb through the damp piles... I haven't eaten, I'm gonna die, by the way. Uh, through the damp piles of filth and mold on his floor to search for helpful items. After finding and eating a few bits of crumbs and old cheese, Kyle found, Kyle found something much more important. I didn't get credit for eating. I'm gonna die. It's over. I'm gonna keel over and die. Good evening, Kyle, she said. That's Rachel. We're at the interview. I've been looking forward to being here. Kyle responded, it's time. We won't be dying today, chat of starvation. We'll never get there. I activate scream and spin in circles. Kyle started to stretch out his arms wide, tilted his neck upwards, and was interrupted by his producer telling him and Rachel that it was time to start the show. Time! Damn it! No! You coward! You goddamn coward. You don't have any bravery in your whole body, John. Not one brave bone in your whole body. We start the broadcast. Hello, everyone. This is Rachel, and I'm going to fall over now. I, uh, I'm dead. I died. Yeah, I start. I have to eat food. I have to clothe myself. Now, those are necessities. Okay? Okay, here's what we do, all right? First of all, I've decided where I'm going, whatever the fuck, I need one? I know, I, I know what I have to do. Dude, I'm gonna catch Gabby. It's time, holy shit, I know what I'm doing. Open the closet. I need my clothing on, I need the suit. Put on the suit. I'm gonna catch her. Scavenge for gossip. I'm gonna hear her talking about being the bug, being bug person, okay? That's quite enough, that's enough. I got the gossip. Now, I'm gonna scavenge for bugs. I need to eat some food. Bugs is the fastest one. Eat them immediately. Done. Now, exit to the hallway, leave the apartment, visit downstairs neighbor. Kyle approached his downstairs neighbor's door and knocked. A middle-aged woman named Gabby answered the door. She looked at Kyle expectantly. I eat her, I consume her. Kyle unhinged his jaw and ate Gabby whole. Job done! Kyle returned to the middle of the street. <clears throat> okay, well, now that that's out of the way, uh, I've got gossip for the interview with, uh, with Rachel. Everything seems to be in order. I'm going to return to my apartment. I'm going to, uh, go to the, uh, the kitchen now, I think. Uh, no, I'm actually gonna go to my bedroom. I'm gonna... Sit at the desk. I'm going to, uh, write some notes for the interview real quick. Uh, and Kyle wrote down his first question. Is your mother a mother? Kyle wrote down his second question. Uh, beef master blended. Kyle wrote down his third question. I purposely ran over a puppy. Uh, Kyle wrote down his last question. Uh, do you feel guilty? Kyle ripped his page of notes out of the notebook and got up from the desk. Oh, yeah. Back to my room. It's time. It's time. We did everything perfectly. This was the perfect day. I've got gossip. I've got questions. I'm going to get Gabby. I'm, I'm going to get Rachel arrested for trying to leave the country. Kyle hurried to the set. Sitting across from his host chair was a glamorous woman with an air of genuinity. As Kyle approached her, Rachel looked up and smiled. Good evening, Kyle, she said, looking at him in the eyes. I've been looking forward to being here. Kyle responded. I spin! Come on! No one can stop me! I, I start spinning. I'm interrupted by my producer again. I start the interview. A moment after a seating, the studio brights, the lights brightened and the cameras clicked on. Gossip about neighbor. Good evening, everybody, said Kyle. My neighbor is a bug vigilante and I'll tell you why. Good evening, everyone. It's time. 
With nothing more to say on the matter, he fell silent. <clears throat> Rachel, also on camera, stared at her hands and wondered when she was going to be introduced. The producer started cutting to different camera angles to break the tension. Kyle continued to remain silent and stare forward blankly. After several minutes, Kyle's stomach began to bubble and pop. Suddenly, his neck shot straight upwards. Sprouting from his mouth was an outstretched hand. Gabby climbed out of Kyle's mouth and walked to the center of the set. Hi, everyone, she said, smiling hollowly. My name is Gabby, and I'm not a bug vigilante. False! Kyle looked at Gabby and returned to staring forward. <laughs> I caught you! I even brought her here, folks! Look! Look at her! False! I, no one else could survive this! Only her! Gabby began to reply but was interrupted by a bug-shaped intercom on her belt. Bug girl! It squawked. A robbery is in progress on East 3rd. Report to me. Gabby threw the intercom on the ground and crushed it under her foot. Foss! Kyle yells again. After a beat, she spoke again. So something has come up and I must go. Gabby left the set. Well, said Kyle, that's all the time we have for tonight. Thanks for joining us, Rachel. Kyle got up, shook Rachel's hand again, and walked past the cameras, leaving her alone. Not knowing what else to do, the producer entered the broadcast. In the coming days, fans of both Rachel and Kyle dubbed this show as a masterpiece of television. Stay Up Late with Kyle's online pages were updated to reflect this broadcast as the most popular ever. Kyle's producer later tried to have Rachel on the show again, but she was very, very, very busy. Dude, I planned it all, dude. I got dressed, I ate bugs, I then ate Gabby, I learned that Gabby was a bug vigilante, and then I fucking brought her on set. I played, I fucking planned all of that. You guys have no idea. I planned all of that from the very beginning. Though, honestly, I did plan to fight her in her own house. I did, that was what I went down there to go do. Uh, dude, I need to know what the fuck the Claymore is good for. I cannot believe... The, I don't understand the Claymore part. Either way, we get out of bed. I'm gonna scavenge. We never finished scavenging for resources last time. Kyle began to comb through the damp piles of filth and mold on his floor in search of helpful items. After finding and eating a few bits of crumbs and old cheese, Kyle found something much more important. Indeed, it was the corpse of Harry, a friend that had gone missing years ago while at Kyle's house. Uh... Oh, yeah, I see it has just been here the whole time. Harry's dead corpse has been here the whole time, Chad. How could I have known? Uh, if I, hey, at least, hey, Harry got, we got him. He's in our inventory now. Kyle, glad to see him again. Kyle was glad to see him again, but was unsure of whether to interrupt such an important day with Harry business. Deal with Harry. Kyle hoisted Harry onto his shoulder and took him outside. Kyle began dragging Harry's body down the street, drawing many, many stairs. Kyle knew exactly where he needed to take Harry's corpse. A lovely, on a lovely play date. Just the two of them. Ah, look at that. Kyle and Harry started at the arcade. Kyle used Harry's arms to operate the joysticks and push the buttons. After five or six different games, the two friends had enough tickets for a single candy bar. They took their prize to the local park for eating. Kyle tried to feed some of the chocolate bar to Harry, but Harry seemed to not have an appetite. After eating, Kyle noticed a nearby playground and dragged Harry over. Kyle tried to figure out a way to swing Harry on the swing set, but lacking the ability to grip, Harry kept falling out. Instead, Kyle started to lug Harry to the top of the slide and shove him down time and time again. Finally, Kyle took Harry to the movies to see as many popular films as the pocket change would allow. Kyle quickly found that he had no pocket change, so he searched through Harry's corpse until he found his wallet. Kyle bought two tickets to a love romance. After getting inside, Kyle left Harry to go find a restroom. By the time Kyle had finished using the restroom, he had forgotten that he brought Harry along. 
Kyle watched a love romance by himself. Harry's corpse sat on a bench at the atrium. In the atrium. I see, I see. While Kyle was in the movie, a beautiful thing happened. Harry's corpse, imbued with the power of friendship and love, was reanimated. Harry's old, rotten flesh gained color and life. His fingernails regrew. His missing eye came back. By the time the movie was over, Harry was able to greet Kyle with a large, friendly hug as his old self. Kyle was confused but delighted that his long-lost friend met him on his way out of the theater. The two made plans to get drinks together and parted ways for the day. Kyle returned home, forgetting about the interview with Rachel. Kyle helped a friend. Dude, I can't believe Harry was under my fucking bed the whole time as a corpse, a dead body. <laughs> well, time to become a ghost and get my laser claymore. It's time, you chat. I, come hell or high water, I am cleaving Rachel in twine. I don't fucking care. I'm getting my fucking armor. Put the armor on. Exit to the bedroom hallway. Check locked door. Float through as a ghost. Go inside. Check the sewing machine while we're here. Kyle walked over to the dilapidated sewing machine. Its box was only half removed. All right, so there's no purpose to that. I just lost an hour of time. Grab the laser claymore. Okay, I've got it. Back to the hallway. Go to the kitchen. Open the fridge. We have yet to prepare breakfast one time. I'm going to prepare some. Kyle constructed a breakfast of post eggs, uh, toast, along with a small fruit cup and grilled sausage. I'm going to smash it. I destroy it. Uh, now I'm going to return to the hallway and stumble very quickly to my bedroom. Uh, scavenge for bugs again. Yeah, get more bugs. Eat them immediately. All right, I ate the bugs, and uh, we're pretty much uh, ready to get this interview on the way. Because I plan on killing Rachel, indeed. Uh, Kyle hurried to the set. All right, hello, Rachel. It's good to see you again. Good evening, good evening. We we shake hands. I answer politely. It's good to see you. The broadcast is it's starting. Good evening, everyone, said Kyle, looking at the camera. Welcome back to Stay Up Late with Kyle. I then vomit everywhere. Again, I vomit up all the horrible things I'd eaten earlier. Rachel looked at Kyle, concerned, gave a couple of coughs, and decided to play it cool and keep the show run. Kyle then stopped, vomited again, and continued with a shaky voice. Tonight I have the pleasure of interviewing the lovely Rachel May, who needs no more introduction. Kyle motioned to Rachel, who was smiling, and waved at the camera. Hello, Kyle. I'm glad to be here. Well, I'm sure we have a lot of things to discuss, so we might as well dive right in, said Kyle. I'm very ready, said Rachel with a winning smile. In shock, Kyle realized he had never bothered to prepare any notes for the interview. Clear, cleaver and half killer. Knowing that he had the eyes of millions upon him, Kyle came up with a solution quickly. You bitch! Rachel, I need you to be honest with me. I, Rachel, Rachel, I need to be honest. You're, you're not terribly interesting, and I, I couldn't think of a single thing to ask you for this entire interview. I'm just going to be real. I'm just being real. You are that boring. I spent literally hours trying to think of anything to ask you, and there's just nothing there. There's just nothing there, Rachel. There's nothing there. There's nothing. There's nothing. There's nothing. In fact, continued Kyle, I would far rather interview a fish, a dead one, than I would you. I'd prefer to interview a fish. I'd, if it was dead, I'd fi I would find that more interesting than talking to you alive right in front of me next to me. And furthermore, said Kyle, I'm not sure I could tell the difference between you and a dead fish. I'm not even sure if you are Rachel. Are you Rachel? Are you actually Rachel? Are you a dead fish? Kyle leaned back in his chair and desperately hoped the blame had been shifted adequately. Rachel glowered at Kyle. Kyle glowered back. Rachel left the studio. Kyle no longer had a guess and spent the next 42 minutes staring at the camera silently. Yes. <laughs> what is the chat? What is the mystery of the laser claymore? We'll have to take it every single time we do anything until we find out the truth. Naturally, that's the only thing we can do. Now, I am going to eat bugs again, because I'm fairly certain bugs is the fastest method for food. I'm going to go put some clothes on. I think putting on the suit is... Yeah, the suit is less steps than the armor. Okay. 
Go back to the bedroom hallway. Grab the laser claymore. Okay. Nah, not, last time we broke the artifact, nothing happened. I'm trying to think of what could change, what I could do that would change something. It actually didn't finish smashing the artifact. Oh my god, maybe you're right. I smash it. You begin pounding the mysterious artifact with both of your hands. Within a few moments, it becomes dust. The ancient force trapped in the artifact is released. Kyle is turned into a lizard demon. Yes, of course, naturally. Well, uh, just about time to write some questions for the interview. I'm gonna go ahead and sit at the desk, uh, write some notes for this one. Ah, yes. Is your mother a mother? What are some diet tips? What a, what, what, I purposely ran over a puppy. And, uh, uh... Do you feel guilty about what happened to me, Kyle, when I became a sword-wielding, armored, uh, uh... Lizard demon? Back to my desk. Apparently, chat, uh, and I just found this out. Well, actually, I found it out a couple rounds ago. I am safe to do the questions part, no matter how much time is left. So that is the last thing we should do every day. I will never be told I'm out of time doing the questions. That it will never tell me that I'm out of time on that one, which is good. All right, let's go. Kyle hurried to the set. Per normal, he ceased to arrive. He ceased to be a ghost before he arrived. Sitting across from his host chair was a glamorous woman with an air of genuinity. As Kyle approached, Rachel looked up and smiled. Rachel's smile turned to horror as she realized she was not looking at a human, but a lizard demon. Pandemonium ensued. Scripts went flying. Crew members ran in all directions. Lights were knocked over. As Kyle watched the chaos around him, his lizard demon enveloped his last shred of humanity. Kyle grew to a massive size. Within several minutes, he had demolished the now empty set. A local force of five spunky teenagers brightly colored in brightly colored apparel arrived at the scene to fight Kyle. As the teenagers swung at him with their spunky, individualized weapons, Kyle pushed them over with his foot. Kyle Rampage, Kyle Rampage of his studio ruins, continued. But in another part of the city, a hero was rising up. In a dusty apartment on the top floor of an old skyscraper in the oldest part of town, sat a large man named Frank. Few people in the world knew that Frank existed. Fewer knew his name. Frank was watching the local news. A story about a studio rampage was playing. Quickly, Frank got up from his chair. He opened a small door hidden behind a poster on his wall. Inside was an unbelievable mound of fat-ridden foods, unrefrigerated and fairly rotten. Frank began to consume the mound at a frightening rate. His body began to puff. Frank expanded faster and faster. With each minute, he burst through the roof. Within minutes, Frank was a towering behemoth. He rolled across the city, rebounding off of buildings and getting cheers from the onlookers below. Approaching Kyle, Frank gave a long, painful heave upwards into the sky. To Kyle, the sky turned black. He looked upwards to see the monstrous figure hurtling towards him. And in a moment, Kyle was completely enveloped in rubbery fat, unable to move or make a noise. Frank was quite tired and passed out where he lay. Several years went by as Frank slumbered. As Kyle was held in Frank's warm, fatty embrace, his humanity began to return. When the first winter came, Frank's body recycled his fat for resources. Over many months, he shrank in size. Eventually, Kyle was human and Frank was thinned. They both walked away from the scene as new men. Neither realized how much time had passed. Wow. That's beautiful, dude. That, that's beautiful, dude. That's really beautiful. I think that's a good spot to go over to the dark room now and find out what's going on in that 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 shithole. I, I think that's beautiful. I think that's beautiful. I think if you guys want to find the rest of the endings on this one, you can go and um, play it yourself because I've only done, I think, ha less than half of them. I don't know what to do with the Claymore chat, all right? I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I think Frank ending was beautiful. 
I think that's a pretty good spot for that one. I'm gonna switch to the dark room now, which is also really good. You guys are gonna like it, trust me, okay? You guys are gonna like the dark room. The dark room. I think that's actually a game on Twitch, fortunately. Even in this one, Kyle sucks. <laughs> <laughs> 